Yesterday I did a post about healthy plant-based index and talking about, it's not just about being vegan, it's about actually eating plant foods. And you could see this actually very poignantly when you look at epidemiologic studies. Let's talk about epidemiology for a second. Of course, uh, many people you'll see online say, oh, the epidemiology is terrible. And epidemiology is not terrible, it's very important. There is not a situation really where we could do a randomized controlled trial of let's say like a vegan diet versus a carnivore diet and follow someone their entire life. It's just not gonna happen. So we need some idea of how do dietary eating patterns affect longevity and affect health. And what we could do is what's called regression analysis uh, or multifactorial regression. And what that is, is we could try to control for things. Like we could take a population and we could say, all right, let's control for smoking. So it, it wouldn't be fair to have one group that has more smokers and another group that doesn't have as many smokers. And uh, I just noticed that Louis is over here watching this little conversation. He's very interested actually in epidemiology. So it, it wouldn't be fair. The smoking could be an independent uh, variable that is affecting whatever we're measuring, whether it's heart disease or mortality. And so we would have to control for that. Now. I think that probably the best population that has ever been studied when it comes to the vegan diet are the Seventh-day Adventists. And there's a reason for that, because first of all, it's a prospective study. Now there's a difference between a prospective cohort study and a cross-sectional study. With a cross-sectional study, what we're doing is we're saying, um, we're gonna look at, at, at someone right now at this moment. Let's look at their labs. Let's look at the amount of heart disease they have at this exact second. But that's not what we really want to know. We want to know what happens during a lifetime. And people change diets during a lifetime. So someone might say, there's a famous study that a lot of carnivores use to say that uh, being vegetarian is bad because the people were vegetarian and then they went and found out who had died 30 years later, but they don't know whether or not the people stayed vegetarian or whether they changed or whether they became vegetarian because they were already sick. And so, you know, you want a population study that goes on a long period of time so you could make these conclusions. The thing I love about the Adventist Health Study is it was a prospective study. So they started following these people early on. It had a large N, and in other words, there's a lot of people. And it had the highest level of vegans. So we had enough people so that we could power, have enough people where we could make statistical analysis that, that means something. On top of that, you've got a heterogeneous group. So it's not like this is one gene. Like you could go to a, a blue zone and you could show that Okinawans live longer than Americans, but that might just be their genes. Or you could do migration studies to try to get around that. But basically you're, you've got a homogenous gene group. Now with the Seventh-day Adventists, there's multiple different genes. Now Adventist Health Study was done mainly in Loma Linda, California. Adventist Health Two was looking at Seventh-day Adventists uh, around the country, although most of them came from Loma Linda, California. So you've also got the same kind of locale. So, you know, uh, confounders like pollution and, and things like that, environments uh, are gonna be, you know, basically uh, very similar, which you want so that that's not a confounding factor in the equation. The other thing I like about the Adventist Health Study is that most of the people follow a fairly healthy lifestyle. That's part of their religion. They believe that the body is the temple of the soul and because it should be treated that way, uh, they all take care of themselves. So it's not like one group is completely sickly and the other group is healthy and there's a healthy user bias. And in fact, when you look at the Seventh-day Adventists, they break down each kind of quartile of... Um, amount of meat eaten. So they've got the non-vegetarian, all right? And so the non-vegetarian group should be like the standard American group. But when you look at their data in the papers, you find that they actually are fairly healthy compared to the average uh, American, all right? So when you look at them, they're actually eating a lot more. They're eating over 30 grams of fiber a day. This is the non uh, vegetarian. This is the people eating meat. The, the average American is lucky if they get 10 grams of fiber a day. They're not drinking a lot of alcohol. They're exercising. And so they tend to be a lot healthier than, than most Americans. Now, what people don't seem to understand is when they look at the Seventh-day Adventist, they've got the non-vegetarian, the semi-vegetarian, which means they eat meat, but not a lot of it. The lacto-ovo-vegetarian, 
basically eats dairy, the pesco vegetarian and the vegan. So they've got quintiles of, of animal protein intake. When they're comparing, when they do a comparison and they say, oh, this group has, so if you look at the way they break down stuff, if they're looking at diabetes, and they show that with diabetes, the vegans had a 62% lower risk of developing diabetes over time. Okay, 62% compared to what? Com compared to the average American? No, it's 62% drop compared to the healthy vegan, I'm sorry, the healthy non-vegan Seventh-day Adventist. You understand? So th that 62% drop is a drop over a healthy comparative person than comparing it to the American. And, and you can see this, the interesting thing, there's also this, this idea of dose dependence, right? So I told you this is broken down basically in quintiles of meat intake, uh, where you've got one group eating a lot of meat, one group not eating a lot of meat, one group just eating uh, um, dairy, one group eating fish. It's not really quintiles of animal protein intake exactly, but a proxy for it. Um, but What's interesting is the more animal protein, uh, each group has a little bit more animal protein, the more animal protein you eat, the more you start seeing these complications. So with diabetes, if you look at the, so you're not looking at the non-vegetarian, right? Because they're the comparator group. If you look at the semi-vegetarian, they had a large drop in diabetes. The pesco-vegetarian had a large drop in diabetes that was, similar and then the lacto ovo vegetarian and then the vegan had a much larger drop and, and no matter what you you look at so if we look for instance at all cancers if you look at the semi-vegetarian there was only a very small drop in all cancers compared to the non-vegetarian uh maybe really non-significant drop but when you go to pesco vegetarian that dropped quite a bit and lacto ovo and pesco are fairly similar and then the vegan had a really dramatic drop uh in all cause um in all cancers and of course with all cause mortality um you have about an eight percent drop with um semi-vegetarian and that goes down to an almost 20 percent drop with pesco vegetarian and um, the vegan is pretty similar. The, actually, the pesco vegetarian had a larger drop in mortality than did pesco vegetarian, which is pretty impressive. Um, and why did the pesco vegetarian do better than vegan? It's hard to say. It could be omega-3 content, and it could go back to um, the uh, cardiovascular or, or even neuro effects of that. But this is why I like the, the Seventh-day Adventist is you get a really good comparison groups. It's pretty well controlled. It's not gonna meet a randomized controlled trial, but it is pretty good data and it's very well thought out uh, by the researchers. Now, what is interesting, you'll often see these meta-analyses that compare different vegan groups. There's, there's several different vegan cohorts out there, but like that plant-based index I was talking about yesterday, just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're healthy. So what about the Adventist health study versus the EPIC study? If you're looking at vegans, a carnivore guy who wants to say vegans are bad could say, well, look, in the EPIC database, the EPIC Oxford vegans um, didn't do that much better than the meat eaters in several of the different metrics, uh, strokes, colon cancer, believe it or not. Now, they're not reading things exactly properly. So like, let's take colon cancer, for example, just about, any study on meat will show a correlation between meat and colon cancer, but in the EPIC data group, the vegans, they said, did not have a um, significant advantage in colon cancer, but, and here's the but, they controlled for fiber. So basically, they found meat eaters that ate almost the same amount of fiber as the vegan group. Not quite the same, but it was pretty close. Um, and before controls, the vegans did do better, but after controls, they didn't. So important to keep that in mind. The other thing is there was an interesting study where they looked at the vegans in the Epic Oxford group and compared them to the Seventh-day Adventists. And I mean, look at this, this stuff. So if you look, first of all, the meat eaters in the Seventh-day Adventists did pretty well. They ate about 22 grams of fiber a day. Um, and that's, you know, pretty impressive for meat eaters because we don't typically see that in the standard American diet. 
Meanwhile, the vegan group only ate 28 grams of fiber. So they're not eating that much more fiber than the meat eaters. And the meat eaters are eating a lot less meat than the average British person or American person. Um, now, that's 28 grams of fiber for the vegan in the Epic Oxford group. What about the Seventh-day Adventist, the group that I really like to look at? 46.7 grams of fiber. 46.7. So far more fiber, and this is much more, uh, I, I think, representative of what a vegan, uh, most vegans, or a plant-based vegan is going to eat. And you're going to eat 46 to 50 grams of fiber a day, eating oatmeal, eating salads, eating beans. I easily eat this much fiber a day. Um, when you look at other factors, uh, the vegan group in the Epic Oxford study uh, tended to drink more alcohol, definitely drank more sugar-sweetened beverages. Um, and what was really fascinating is they only took in 0.78 micrograms of B12 a day versus 6.3 in the vegan group. They were definitely B12 deficient and they weren't supplementing. It's a little bit of an older group. A lot of them there are, are ethical vegans. And so that's going to have an effect on health. It's going to have a real effect. It's going to cause homocysteine levels to rise, which is going to have an effect on stroke and heart disease, although vegans did have less heart disease than meat eaters in the study. You may have seen an even bigger difference had you controlled for that or had you had vegans supplement. Um, and so uh, I, I definitely think that, and you look at the Oxford group, they're a, a, a group that using the Harvard uh, Healthy and Unhealthy Plant-Based Index would probably have a higher unhealthy plant-based index. And if you look at the Adventist Health, they'd probably have a higher health-based index, healthy plant index. And that's why they're likely to have better results. Uh, so again, it's eating less meat especially in the Adventist health group, shows that it does have a real effect on health. Uh, but not only that, you also have to eat your fiber and eat your healthy vegetables in order to be healthy. And understand that when you hear someone talking about these studies, usually they've never read the studies, gone into the details about it, or understand the intricacies in running these really large, very controlled uh, cohorts, uh, but these cohorts give us a lot of information. Uh, I will talk in some future um, videos about, look, epidemiology I think is really good, but you got to look at epidemiology around the world. Uh, if you see one population where it, like meat causes something, does that, is that true of all populations around the world? For instance, unprocessed meat tends to be associated uh, quite a bit with cancer and heart disease when you look in American uh, studies. When you look at studies around the world, that doesn't always hold true. Why is that? We, I'll get into that in some other videos. Um, and there's, you know, other problems with these large cohorts. There's uh, lots of confounding factors, uh, but there's a way around these, especially with heart disease, and that's called Mendelian randomization. And I want to get into that in some future videos. Hope this helps.